Either for lose. So I've got me some lovely brake calipers and a big block of plexiglass. You'll recall that we've made our fair share of transparent parts for a car. But in this episode, why don't we make some transparent brake calipers? I for one am quite curious to observe the flow of brake fluid and to actually see what it is to bleed the brake system. To get the air out of it, I mean. Yeah, let's make a transparent caliper and see what those processes look like. Let's go. So we're basing this on a caliper for a front-wheel drive lot and we'll be replicating this aluminum bit that contains the brake piston. And we are going to have to make it thicker and meatier, as the material isn't as durable as aluminum, meaning we're going to have to make the part more massive. As always, we are using plexiglass. I've got a big chunk of it. I'll cut a piece from it of the required diameter, and from there we machine a caliper out of it. We'll drill out some holes, make the recess for the piston, and we should end up with a more or less decent plexiglass copy of an aluminum caliper, which I'll polish for it to look like this. Check this out, guys. Here we have a caliper that would usually contain a piston. The bracket with the pins is of no interest to us, as it doesn't contain any liquid. Anyway, this is the stock caliper, and this is a transparent copy of that. Now, we did make it bigger, what with the material not being quite as durable as aluminum. Plexiglass is quite a bit softer. But so far, this is going very well indeed. We've done the machining, polishing, we've installed the seal. Now it's a matter of fitting the piston and doing some slight modifications. Also assembly. But so far, this is looking neat and terrific. So look here. This is a mock-up of the braking system that we've set up on the bench. Here we have the brake master cylinder and the caliper. It is currently empty, but we've poured in some brake fluid. So supposedly this is fitted to a car. And now the bleed process begins. We press down on the brake pedal. And the brake fluid is now slowly filling the chamber. There we go, and it's slowly pushing the piston out in the process. Press on this, the piston can't move any further. There is pressure inside of there. Let's relieve it. As we usually do. We undo this. Pressure gets relieved. And now we release the brake pedal. Fluid is going into the master cylinder. And now let's press down on the brake pedal once again. We can see the pot filling up. Now we hold the brake pedal. Open the valve. Relieve the pressure. Terrific. And you'll notice that we still have some air in there. You can clearly see it. And we got a very good view of the air bubble that forms when the brakes haven't been properly bled. 
Now that doesn't seem like a whole lot of air, but actually it's quite a bit. The brake pedal is released, and this is what mushy brakes look like. Now we press it, that prompts the piston inside of the master cylinder to push brake fluid into this area. But since we got air in there, the air just gets squeezed. You can see by how much it contracts. And that correlates to massive pedal travel, all while not translating to pressure exerted by the brake pads. Now, you'll remember that the typical brake bleeding process involves one person holding the brake pedal while somebody else releases the air. Because if you let go of the pedal while there's still air inside the system, well, this is what happens. You let go of the pedal and the air finds its way back into the hose. The takeaway here is that this is no way to bleed the brakes. I've also seen many times how people stab the brakes abruptly just like this, in order to bleed the system that way. But with the air moving around so actively, what actually happens is the brake fluid starts to foam. The big air bubble turns into a bunch of tiny ones that are really, really small. And they disperse and find their way all around the fluid in the cylinder. But if you let it sit, all of the tiny bubbles rise and join together to form one big bubble once again. That's going to result in the brakes becoming mushy once more and in need of bleeding. Now, say you fit some new braking system components, pads, rotors. They're of course prone to wear as you drive the car around. But what if you fail to check the brake fluid level? It'll continue to drop until the point where this happens. By this I mean air finds its way into the system. At some point you press the brake pedal, and the system does not want to work. The reason being that the brake fluid level is low. The master cylinder sucked in some air and fed it into the rest of the system. And as a result the brakes no longer work. So we've just simulated the brake bleeding process, which you need two people to do. But another popular method, and one that I actually haven't tried myself, is gravity bleed. That's when you got the reservoir placed up high. The process involves undoing this valve through which the air escapes. The air finds its way out and the brake fluid fills the system. Yeah, let's try this method out and see how effective it is, let's go! So the cylinder and the reservoir are now situated a bit higher, caliper is lower down, and let's undo this and see what happens. Brake fluid is obviously heavier than air, and something is happening. The fluid is going in, not at breakneck speed. But then nobody said that this will take 30 seconds. Now look, the hose coming from the caliper, we've placed it into this cup, and we can see how the air is coming out. But over here we notice that the cylinder is full, and it is thoroughly filled up. Now it's definitely safe to say that there's no air left because we don't see bubbles coming out of the hose that's coming off of the bleed valve, and is submerged in the old brake fluid that used to be in the system. And that's nice. You'll see that we are looking really good. And another benefit is that you don't have to press the brake pedal. I mean, the seal wearing out isn't much of a factor. But the real benefit here is that the brake fluid is not foaming. And that is really good because that minimizes the chances of large air bubbles forming in the system. All right, well, we've evaluated how this works in here. I mean, we did know the theory of how this entire process transpires, but it is a really cool thing when you're able to actually have a clear view of all of this going on. Now let's fit this caliper to a car and see how it does its job on there, let's go.
Check this out, guys. The transparent caliper has been fitted to a car. Now let's see how it does with its actual functions. Okay, let's try setting off. For starters, taking it easy, of course. It stops, that is nice. Let's try backing up. Going slowly, because this is not a metal caliper. This is plexiglass, after all. It does work. And that is what we set out to do. To check how it works. Given the conditions, we're fine, but I reckon if we try some more spirited driving, then the mechanism very well might overheat. Works superbly, will you look at that? Yep. Now, its main weakness, obviously, it'll be sensitive to heat. Also, the cylinder that contains the piston is quite massive. The walls are really thick, and so the cylinder should hold up. But the mounting tabs, those might prove to be problematic. But let's try them. Pick up a bit more speed. Does the caliper have enough bite to engage the pads hard enough for the wheel to lock up on pavement? Opa. And it fell short. No. But I mean, this was to be expected. It just went click, something clicked and the brakes failed. Come on, keep turning it. Yes, yeah, Sergey, it grenaded. So, look here, we removed the caliper, and we can see a crack over here. Going from the bolt hole used to mount it, and from there, hydraulics are really handy at transferring a load. And it looks like it found a weak spot because of the cut, I mean... Even without it, if I had applied enough pressure to the brake pedal, it would have failed anyway. It would have cracked regardless. But at the end of the day, this was to be expected. But we got a good look at how a caliper works. And at what goes on when you bleed the brakes. But that's all I got for you. Watch us consider subbing and catch you later.